Hello, welcome back to How to D&D. This is going to be essentially the last live stream for 2021, and I'm going to talk about how to create non-player characters. Now, I've done this before, but this is a little bit different. This is supposed to be a catchment for everything, and it's also supposed to be a, a product of trying to make it as quick and fast as possible, and as simple as possible for you in your game, rather than to be complicated, I'm not really going to explain. I'm going to give you actual techniques and strategies rather than discuss things in a sort of broad manner. I'm actually going to give you quite specific information. Okay, so my suggestion to you is, is get some food, get some drink, make sure you are comfortable, and settle down, and I will discuss everything that I actually use myself, my own strategies. Now, whether they are going to be any good to you, I don't know. But we're going to give it a go and see how it, uh, it turns out. I'm hoping this will be useful to you in some way. And I'm pretty sure it will be. Okay, so settle down. Let's do this. Hi, welcome to How to d d My name is Fred Wheeler. And today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. Because I always do. But um, I'm actually not talking about Dungeons and Dragons specifically. Now the topic for today is really a broad catchment for all role play games because the same strategies that apply to building an NPC for Dungeons and Dragons apply to every other NPC you might create for your Pathfinder game, your Fate game. They're all pretty much the same in terms of how you go about doing things. There might be some different wording going on but essentially it's the same. So this is all about creating quick non-player characters in your role-play games. Now when I say quick, I really do mean quick. We're not going to spend hours going through the process of building a non-player character because often you'll find you do this and it doesn't really get you anywhere. Not to mention if you've got a lot of non-player characters to build, you won't have time to do that. So we're not going to work with the premise that you have a lot of time. The premise is that you don't have a lot of time and therefore we have to do this a particular way. Now for this live stream, to make things a little bit more interesting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post a poll for you to communicate with. Uh, I've given you four options, I can only offer four options with this question and feel free to uh, select the one that applies to you if you want to, if you don't want to take part in the chat. I will do a a Q&A at the end, but that's beside the point. Let's go through the basics of what you are going to have to deal with in terms of actually building a character from scratch and also how to cheat because I'm going to talk about how to cheat as well for those of you who need to be able to cheat and get things done even quicker than normal. So here are a few tips for making fast non-player characters for your role-play games. Now the easiest way to actually make or craft, should I say, a non-player character is to get someone else to actually make it for you in advance. Now I know that sounds like pretty obvious, like do I need to hang around for this? To make it clear, my intention with this is to explain to you how to do it with taking up almost no time, and then the other technique is you might have to spend a little bit of time, but not a lot of time. Okay, so we're going to go through the, the cheat methods, and then we're going to go through the non-cheaty methods. But there's nothing wrong with using the, the quick methods like this, like getting somebody else to do it. So the first thing I'm going to suggest to you is the, um, the Game Master's Book of Non-Player Characters. And this essentially has hundreds of pages of ready-made non-player characters. I've recently uh, purchased this book. I actually have it. I will do a review on this book eventually. I don't know exactly when. And I there literally are. There's a lot of different uh, non-player characters in here. Okay, Some have pictures, some don't. Some have stat blocks. But the one thing they do all have is information on the non-player character so you can actually role play and use the character and interact with other um, player characters in your adventure or your campaign. It's a very good book for getting a whole lot of stuff all in one place. I'm not going to say that it is the absolute best way to do things because there's always other ways and I've got about six different techniques you can use. So there's this book. Then we also have, the, there's a Pathfinder uh, NPC codex available. It's full of pre-made 
uh, non-player characters if you wanted to use that. If you're playing Pathfinder and and you want that sort of uh, that sort of feel, you could use them. I think a lot of the information could also be ported over to um, uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5e or other role-play games if you wanted to. The same with this. Now the book I just showed you, the Game Master book of non-player characters, it is um, compatible. It's compatible with 5e, but a lot of the information in here, although teed up for 5e, is you can use with any game system. It wouldn't matter. Now another thing to bear in mind, particularly when you have like literally no time, um, is any published adventure okay has heaps of non-player characters that can be stolen you just pluck them i mean whether you borrow it or stole like yeah it's yours once you buy the product it's yours okay it's not stealing uh you just take them they're yours now you use them particularly if there's one that stands out that you like the look of now the internet is full of uh, non-player character or npc generators that make your non-player character with just the push of a button in seconds if you literally just want to make them rather than actually buy a product like this particularly if you don't already have it that's fine so there's a website called npc generator now you'll find the link to this and everything that i talk about today down in the description everything that i discuss should be down in the description and if it's not there you're going to let me know uh, so the npc generator i'm not a fan of it myself i know other people do use it um it i always find that the NPCs that generates aren't exactly what I because I don't have enough control over what I'm doing with it and so therefore I, I'm not really happy with the end result but you know software and applications is still a good way of getting an NPC fairly quickly particularly if you just have like zero time there's just no time whatsoever available to you. Now there's another um, product that you could um, grab hold of. I've kind of talked about this before, and that is the Game Master's Book of Random Encounters. This has a percentile table for random um, create randomly creating an NPC or non-player character. Now I've already done a live stream on this product. I've done a a, a flip through a book review on this product. It's a pretty good product for what it is. But if all you want is non-player characters, it's probably not the right book for you because it's more around random encounters. But there is a, when I say a percentile table for randomly generating um, NPCs, what I need to say to you is that what it gives you is the first name, the second name. It gives you uh, kind of a description of the character, a little bit about that character, sort of what they like and what they're kind of carrying, what gear they might have. I believe that's the, the gist of that particular. Now, those that chart covers a lot of area, okay? It's covering like pages and pages. It's literally a hundred different things and you randomly roll for every single column. So it will give you a, a, a good variety of NPCs if you really wanted to. That's if you really want to have them generated randomly. If you don't want it randomly generated, then it's probably not the right book for you. Okay. Now, I should also point out that the, the Game Master's Book of Non-Player Characters also has a random NPC table in it. Actually, it has many of them. Most of them are a D20, so there's 20 options in each chart. But there, there's got to be, there's quite a few. Is, it, is there 12 tables? There's a lot of tables. Okay, and you can't really mix and match them because they're kind of designed around specific areas and purposes and uh, therefore they're sort of they're, they're grouped together but it's full of tables that do this certainly a, a reasonably good product um, with regard to something like this now now that seems now i know you're all thinking well he hasn't mentioned anything about anything else and he's just mentioning those and what's the deal here and all the rest Look, if you want to randomly generate NPCs using the Dungeon Master Guide for Dungeons & Dragons 5e, you can. There are some tables in there. I personally think they are inferior to everything that I've talked about so far. Like literally, I know that sounds rough, but it's true. Okay, it is the truth. Um, the Dungeon Master Guide for Dungeons & Dragons 5e is a very poor resource when it comes to actually building an NPC. I've never found it particularly useful at all, which is why I tend to sort of avoid it if I can, um, and I use other tools. 
and I'm pretty low tech when I do things and I like to have some control over how I make my NPCs. So therefore, I'm gonna go into how you do this when you have a bit of control over the process. <clears throat> so, for those of you who are waiting for the, the real juice, and that is like, how do I actually do the building rather than get somebody else to do all the work for me? We're here now. If you prefer making your own non-player characters, then there are a few techniques for building an NPC or non-player character quickly. And that is, you need to make sure you don't spend a lot of time on the process, okay, and you need to get things done quickly. And there are some key things that you generally need. And I would say your the NPC name, so name, motivation, and then the, the NPC's ideals, or it's not so much ideals, I guess, is it characteristics or aspects? Then we can do appearance. Appearance is useful. And then stat blocks, I'm going to leave like to the very end. I think that's probably the least important aspect to actually dealing with any kind of character that you're making for as an NPC is the stat block. Because that assumes that this NPC is always going to wind up entering into combat and they may well never have anything to do with combat. So let's deal with the role play stuff and the stuff you're most likely to use and deal with the stuff you're less likely to use at the very end. Okay, so a non-player character's name is probably the most important step, uh, which you can also get from an electronic uh, name generator if you wanted to. If you want to use an electronic generator, you can, and down in the description you will find a link to a website called Fantasy Name Generator, or Generators, and it has various names that are related to, to the different sexes, male and female, and they're also related to different races. So it's breaking it up. It even gives you names based on uh, nationality. So, you know, um, I believe it breaks it up into French, um, English, uh, Ukraine, all sorts of things. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different countries listed there because a lot of people use different names, different spellings, um, so yes, a, a pretty good resource with regard to that, particularly if you struggle at actually getting names onto paper and that blank piece of, piece of paper for your NPC stays blank. Okay, now even with a, a, a generator, I'm not really a fan of always using a generator. There's another technique that I use and that is there's actually nothing wrong with using standard names, like standard names uh, that you know of, okay? And, or even exotic names of people that you have met or know of. It's probably one of the easiest ways to actually get a name that you can pronounce. <laughs> because one of the problems with NPC names and any kind of fantasy adventure or roleplay game is often the names are unpronounceable or are so difficult to actually get your, your tongue around. So it's often better to pick a name you already have exposure to. Now, I know a lot of you are going to say, well, yeah, but I don't want to call my characters John, Sally, Bill, and Bob. Uh, but no, you don't have to do it that way. <laughs> you, can, you can actually branch it out. I'm sure you've met some people who have some uh, more exotic names that might fit into a fantasy-themed uh, uh, role-play game better than um, Bob and Jill, okay? There are other ways of doing it. It's actually not very difficult to make up a list of non-player characters uh, names and you can use them later on so when you do this my suggestion to you is just make up a whole list now it can be the first name only or it could be the first name and the second name um, it can be male and female it's really sort of it's up to you what you think is going to be most useful to you but that is the first aspect to actually building an NPC is get the name down you may never find that you need anything more than just the NPC's name and the rest of this will be absolutely useful, useless to you because you'll never get there. You're never, you're never too sure what a player is actually going to do at the table. Right. That's names down. NPC motivations. Now the reason I'm talking about the non-player character motivations now is it's, it's, even, it's the next important aspect of your non-player character. Okay. But it's not necessarily the order that you build your non-player character. But I'm going to talk about this next because that is probably the one that you're going to need to use the most when you're role-playing an NPC. 
Now, the motivation of any non-player character is like vital to it's vital to portraying the character and interacting with your your players' characters. So you need to have that motivation. Now, the easiest way to deal with this is to pull a simple motivation from real life that you think will fit. And so to give you an example very quickly of what that kind of looks like, if you're building an NPC who is a shopkeeper or looks after a shop, their key motivation, particularly if they own that store or shop, is to make money, probably. And that in that scenario, their 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 intention is to make money by selling their goods or their services. And in the case of their interaction with the player's characters, it might be specifically to get a sale. So it's it's not it's not brain surgery, okay? It's very, very simple stuff. Now don't run away. I know a lot of people are thinking, why did I even show up for this? Look, I think there is more to come. So you can use that if you really want to. It's actually probably the easiest way to make an NPC seem uh, legitimately realistic. If you want that real feel, that is probably the easiest way. You can add other things later if you wanted to. All right, so there's also a, um, if you want motivation tables for slots for like a, a villain or an NPC, well, you can also find those usually in most Game Master Guide books for any kind of role-play game. Almost any role-play game has a, um, a Dungeon Master Guide or a Game Master Guide book, and in there, there usually should be a table that gives you um, motivations, objectives, goals for your villains or your non-player characters. Now, if you're not finding one for non-player characters, there's probably a reason for that. <clears throat> And that is because the number of motivations and goals that a, a, an NPC that isn't the villain is much wider, broader, and more extensive than any villain can ever possibly have. Most villains, their motivations are pretty simple. And there aren't that many of them. So you can kind of quantitate, um, the, the, it's quantitative uh, to a certain degree, where there's really no limit to any kind of NPC depending on their function. But again, most good Game Master books will have that thing there. Now for those of you who really are wanting specifics, the Game, so I should, I should I not the Game Master, but the Dungeon Master Guide for Dungeons and Dragons 5e does have a table on page 94. Now this has villain objectives and motivations. There's nothing in there really about motivations, goals and objectives for NPCs. When I looked through the the Dungeon Master Guide for 5e, there is some stuff there, but it's not really what you're looking for. <clears throat> so my suggestion is stick with what makes sense. Use reality a little bit, real life, to actually superimpose motivations that will make sense for your NPCs. It's much easier to do it that way. Okay, next, here is where we start getting, I guess a lot of people consider this the guts of an NPC, and that is the non-player character aspects. So the depth of a non-player character is created by giving them a function or purpose. You could also just classify it as an occupation, depending on whether their interaction is going to be more about the fact that they have a job or an occupation. So that all sort of function, purpose, occupation, job, that's all under the same umbrella, okay? And it's probably the easiest place to start once you've got your name. Next, we've got personality traits. You don't have to have any more than one personality trait for an NPC, otherwise you're making things way too complicated for yourself, and you won't have time to do that, because remember, we're doing this quickly. Ideals, bonds, now ideals basically is what they... I guess what they value, bonds is who they are connected to or what they're connected to, and then flaws is their weakness. It seems pretty obvious, and sometimes, but not always, but sometimes an NPC will have a secret or secrets, and you might want to actually highlight them as well. But it's not necessary to give every single NPC a secret. All the other stuff that I've just talked about is not necessary to give them every single aspect of that either. 
as long as you have the purposeful function of that NPC, some sort of personality trait, and a flaw. Things like ideals and bonds are great to have, but you can get by without them if you really needed to. So how do we deal with actually getting our aspects built around for our NPC? So the Dungeon Master Guide for Dungeons and Dragons 5e on page 89 through to 91 and page 96 has like some very small tables. They have very, very small tables for non-player character character um, characteristics. This is where you roll up stuff. It's covering pretty much all the stuff I've just talked about, okay, to a certain degree. Not all of it, but to a certain degree, most of it is there. I would say to you, although that seems very, very tempting, there is probably a simpler way to do this if you're playing Dungeons & Dragons 5e. I will talk about stuff when you're not playing Dungeons & Dragons 5e. A very easy way to develop a non-player character um, and its aspects is to select a background from the player's handbook. Like literally, pick up the player's handbook rather than the Dungeon Master Guide because I don't particularly like the Dungeon Master Guide for making my NPCs. But the Player's Handbook I find more useful for Dungeons & Dragons 5e. There's more stuff in here that I can use for making an NPC than anywhere else. Now, by, by selecting a background, I've pretty much given myself all the tools that I need to build almost any NPC that I want. There will be some nuances, um, in terms of backgrounds don't always in here don't always cover everything that you might want but if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons 5e pick the background that fits the NPC that you want okay and then you can randomly roll or select the pers personality traits uh, from the, the tables that are there you can select the ideals the bonds the flaws from the tables presented now I don't particularly like rolling randomly I prefer to look at the tables and then I will select the one that I like, and then I might make some modifications to the one that I've selected. I like to have a bit of control about what I'm doing with the NPC, because even if I've got a blank piece of paper and I don't really know anything about the, um, this, this character, I, have a, a, I will have some idea of how it's going to have to integrate into my adventure or my campaign. And there, if I don't have full control of that, it's actually really difficult for me to get my head around doing this. And it's a technique that I've talked about before. It's nothing new, okay? And I find this far more useful. Now, there are, there's actually other books out there. If you were playing, say, Dungeons & Dragons 3.5, I believe the Player's Handbook um, number two, the second Player's Handbook for Dungeons & Dragons 3.5, had this sort of thing. You will find this, a lot of this stuff exists and other game systems in their dungeon master guides where they actually have like tables that allow you to do this. Um, there's another another thing, now I know I'm talking a lot in respect to Dungeons, dungeons and Dragons 5e, but I'm actually gonna give you some techniques that don't, re, don't revolve around using Dungeons and Dragons 5e products. Don't worry, it's coming. Um, the actual, the first dungeon master screen for Dungeons and Dragons 5e has tables on the first panel. Okay, that, that randomly generate names for your NPC or non-player character and their aspects. It is probably the one area that when I first started doing dun uh, playing Dungeons & Dragons 5e, I did not use. I, I, I frowned on it. But if you are an experienced Dungeon Master, and some of you will be, this is actually not, not a, a bad collection of tables. Uh, it still runs into the same problem I find as the Dungeon Master Guide for 5e, and that is, there's not enough. Like 20 options on one table, 12 options on another, 10 options on another. It's, frankly, I would be frustrated if that is all I had to play with, okay? And this is why um, I, I tend to recommend people towards things that have particularly if you're going to use random generators, they're not there for you to roll randomly. The idea that they're there to give you ideas if you are stuck, okay? That's their purpose, nothing else. So don't get caught up in the fact that it's a, it's a random table because you're not going to do it randomly. Who in their right mind really wants to make just a, a, just 
blatantly random character. It's not really the sort of thing we want to do with our games. Okay, so now there's another way you can do this, particularly if you're stuck and you can't just sit there and just come up with ideas, because really the blank piece of paper stays blank unless we have some, some sort of input or data going into our brain that allows us to process it and come up with ideas. Now you can get Rory Story Cubes physically and you can also get them on a phone app. And you can probably find something like Story Cubes for free as an app or as a piece of software. Uh, and I know because um, if Wally DM is in the uh, in the live stream, which I believe he is, hi Wally, how's it going? Uh, Wally will be able to confirm that he's probably found more than a few Story apps or Story Cube apps. And basically, all these are is inspiration for you. So you can also roll anything anywhere between one and six dice or story cubes that the idea is to assist you in inspiring ideas for the non-player character and their different aspects and how do you do this well they actually have the cubes they're just six-sided dice there's nothing special about them it's just a six-sided dice the only difference is with these six-sided dice is that they have pictures on them you may have seen these before. This is an idea that Sly Flourish or Mike Shea put out many years ago. Um, I think he's probably the first person I ever saw to actually spearhead this idea. Everybody else has been piggybacking off this idea, but it's a pretty brilliant idea. And the different pictures on there help you sort of give you ideas as to what the player character um, or the non-player character is actually going to be like you don't have to use them and maybe you'll roll the dice and you're like whatever you rolled up you didn't like it i rolled i rolled a tp and i don't i don't think this character a tp what does that got to do with my character they live in the city roll the dice again they're just a story creation or character creation tool they're not something that you follow blindly and that's all you do Now you might have noticed that I've been giving you a lot of stuff that either requires you to buy something, have something, or jump on the internet to, to create something, okay? But you will find a lot of these things are for free and you don't have to pay anything, but you will obviously have to have access to the internet. So let's talk about non-player character appearance because often we like to have a picture of um, that non-player character. So I want to talk about that particular aspect. I've put this much further down the chain in terms of importance. Okay, so what a non-player character looks like can help define them at a surface level, like what they look like. But it doesn't give you what's going on underneath, okay? But it's actually often not vital. I would say having the appearance or the look of your character, it's not vital but it is, it is just very useful. It's very useful. But there are some problems with um, focusing on a picture or the appearance of a non-player character. If you don't have time to find a, a picture of a, any kind of non-player character, then create one important physical feature that makes them stand out. Maybe it is that they have a, an eye patch or a mustache, or maybe it is that, that they have red hair. Uh, um, long red hair. Maybe they have a, um, a mole um, near their mouth. Uh, possibly a scar. Uh, maybe there is something about them. Maybe they have um, blue-green eyes. There's going to be something about that character. It might be that they, they have more than one finger. Look, I'm being quite... Um, I'm obviously, I'm giving you examples that are quite exaggerated. So you don't have to use the exaggerated features. You can do something that's quite minor. And simple okay a mono brow you could just give them a mono brow if you wanted to something that makes the character stand out and it only has to be one feature you do not need to have down like what they're wearing and all that sort of stuff because ultimately in the end you've got to do this quickly and also too it needs to be something that will help define the character in some way that the players will gravitate to and, and latch on to no guarantee that's going to happen though so that's my, my suggestion to you in terms of um, building the appearance. Now, the, the rest of the advice I'm going to give you with a warning. 
when you go down the path of trying to find a picture or an image of a non-player character for your adventure or campaign, you can wind up going from trying to do it quickly to never having enough time to get it done and it taking you far too long. I know this because I've done it more than once and it is like it's like the rabbit hole that never ends <laughs> let's see how far the the rabbit, rabbit hole goes there's no end to how much time you can spend trawling for images but here's a couple of techniques if you really want a picture um, if you have access to the internet uh, then you can find hundreds of non-player character portraits on pinterest i have provided a link down in the description to help you with this process if that is what you want. But this can be a trap. It sucks away all your time, as I said. And you will find that you're looking for a particular character look. And you'll never find quite the right one. So you keep looking and you keep looking and you keep looking only to realize that whatever's in your mind and head is probably something you should have just written out. Bullet point it and be done with it rather than spend hours and hours trawling looking for exactly the right picture. I know this, I've made the mistake, I'm suggesting you shouldn't do the same thing. And now if you've been running games for a while, you'll already know all this, this sort of stuff. You've probably already made these mistakes. Now Pathfinder and similar roleplay games have decks of uh, face cards. These are small cards that are printed with a, a picture on them. I'm not going to show you any of them. I've done reviews on those types of cards before if you're really that interested. Um, they can be very helpful because if you're only selecting from one deck and the cards are in front of you, you've kind of got to just commit yourself to something. But again, um, the problem is that you can run, it's all about your own brain, right? Non-player character portraits, it's really difficult to find the perfect picture. So even if you restrict yourself to a deck of cards, face cards that have pictures of non-player characters, what you ultimately find is that there's just not the right picture for what you had in mind. And so you wind up trawling through them and think, nah, and then you go looking somewhere else. This is why I suggest coming up with one particular standout feature and writing it down as a bullet point when it comes to the appearance of your non-player character. That is all that is ultimately important to you. The rest you can deal with on the fly if absolutely necessary. Okay, now, stat blocks. I know we're going to have to get to stat blocks, so let's talk about it because I know it's a topic that what people want to talk about. It's always the case. Somebody always wants to talk about stat blocks. And sometimes you need a stat block for an NPC. So how do we do this easily and quickly? So here's some, I've got five points for you that should help. There is nothing quick about building a non-player character stat block for combat. So I suggest you don't even bother. Forget about actually building it. Because if you're trying to do this quickly, you can't do it quickly. Not when you're doing a stat block. There might be some game systems that you may be able to do it a bit faster. Dungeons and Dragons 5e is not one. Dungeons and Dragons full stop isn't one. Pathfinder won't really do that. Fate, you might get away with something like Core Fate or Bulldogs. You could probably do something like that and have a stat block that's fairly simple and easy to understand because it's, it's based off a couple of skills and that's it and there's nothing else to it. But it's not necessarily going to work that way, ultimately. So my suggestion to you is um, use something that's already made. That's probably the best way to deal with all of this is just use something that's already made. Almost all role-play games have creatures, monster stat blocks, or monster books. Um, and they'll be generic stat blocks for commoners and combat NPCs and you're going to port them over and use them with your NPC rather than doing anything else. It, fine, make adjustments to the stat block if you feel you need to, but again, remember it takes more time to do that, so do you really need to do that? You may never ever get into a fight, so it's not going to be necessary. Uh, the monster manual for Dungeons and Dragons 5e, if I've got it close by, so one of the good things about this book 
the Monster Manual for Dungeons and Dragons 5e is it has a bunch of general combatant stat blocks for NPCs in the back of the book, including the commoner. I've used the commoner stat block in here so many times. And a lot of the uh, stat blocks for the other NPCs in the back here are super useful. It's going to be absolutely no use to you if you're playing a different game other than Dungeons and Dragons 5e. But if you're playing Dungeons and Dragons 5e, this is a good place to go. And I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but that is my suggestion to you. Okay. Now, if you've got some other supplements for Dungeons and Dragons 5e, so uh, Dungeons and Dragons 5e has sidekicks. These have medium stat block complexity. If you have something like Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, you'll find that in there. Even the Dungeons and Dragons Essentials Kit has sort of stat blocks that can be upgraded or leveled up in them. Um, they don't go, for, I think they only go from level 1 to 6 rather than from level 1 to 20 with uh, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. But if you're wanting stat blocks, but one of the good things about the, um, the Dungeons and Dragons Essentials Kit is that even if you don't use the stat blocks, they often have a write-up covering all of the general non-player character aspects and characteristics like ideals, bonds, flaws, personality traits, and a little bit about them or what their function is in the world. And that's on a little on a little card. There's like a whole bunch of cards, a whole lot of characters there that you can use. It's actually a pretty good tool, which is why it's one aspect of the game I sh think we should see more of. And, and this is how... NPC should be um, uh, laid out for us. Not a wall of text, but laid out in that format because it's so easy to understand for a dungeon master. There are a lot of game systems that do similar things as well. It's not just Dungeons and Dragons 5e. Now, if you want more complex stat blocks for your Dungeons and Dragons 5e uh, non-player character, try the website RPG um, Tinker. I've put the link down in the description. I would also recommend things like um, the website um, Donjon. So that's D-O-N-J-O-N. If I haven't put it down in the description, look, that, that helps you with generic Dungeons and Dragons or fantasy role-play games or role-play games in modern science fiction. It, it really has a whole lot of tools that deal with all of that for your NPCs and specific game systems as well. It's probably one of the better um, websites that's been around and it's been around a long time and it does the job pretty well. That'll help you get what you're looking for. Stat blocks are always a tricky thing. I don't want to obviously cover every single game system and stat blocks for them because it doesn't, it doesn't work. As I said, you'll often find that there is a monster or creature book that is made for that particular game system that has a lot of generic stuff, and that's where you just use those and make alterations if you must. There are many things you can add to a non-player character, okay, such as race and gender or sex. But it's absolutely it's it's not instrumental uh, in the initial non-player character building. It's not something you absolutely must start off with or even concern yourself with too much, okay? Their race and gender is not the important aspect of it. And I know a lot of people might get upset, but I just want to explain myself a little bit. I kind of find that if I build my non-player character using race and gender in the first um, building process, that I am shaped, and I'm 50, okay, and, and my, my own life experience is going to be a product of this, I will tend to superimpose stereotypes that I have built up in my brain or people that I have met that are, you know, of a particular race or gender, although I never met a tabaxi before, so I don't have to worry about that one. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm less likely to put on stereotypes with regard to gender and race if I leave that to last, and it is literally the last thing I would concern yourself with. You do not need to start with them. Build the character first and then put those on after. And what you have done is you've built a character that makes sense to you, makes sense to your world, makes sense to your adventure, 
and will hopefully be interesting to whoever interacts with it without relying on those two aspects. Um, and for those of you who are thinking I'm doing this because of um, social pressure, the truth of the matter is I've kind of always done it that way. Um, I, I, I have tried doing it the other way where I start with um, you know name, race and gender and then do everything else. I always find it doesn't really work for me. I actually think it works better the other way around. Just my opinion. And, and like anything that I do, I, it's, this is a, you could do it this way, not you should do it this way. Because I frankly don't care how you do it. I'm just here to give you some tools. Now my hope is that I've given you enough information in this video that you will feel comfortable and making pretty much anything that you want to make. And if this video has been useful to you, and, I, and it's been a useful um, um, segment of time for you, that's great. Now I, I have hundreds of videos for players and Dungeon Masters, but I do have videos that do actually cover a lot of non-player characters that I specifically built for adventures, such as the Lost Mine of Fandalva, uh, the Dragon of Ice by Peak, I believe you will find some for Curse of Strahd, and I also have some generic stuff that sort of explains how to make non-player characters and other stuff if you're interested. Now, if you liked what you've watched here and you want to support the channel, you can through my Patreon page where you get the written scripts for all of my videos and maybe some extra stuff, plus the previews of all the videos that will eventually be dumped onto my channel uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing. And it's probably the easiest way to communicate with me if you really want to do that. It, I don't have tier systems, by the way. Um, I also have affiliate links to Amazon, to anything down in the description if you want to buy something online or you're interested in doing um, supporting that way uh, through online purchases. I have merchandise shelf underneath my videos. Or you just watch my videos, that's fine too. You know, I'm fine with that. Now do the usual YouTube things, you know what I'm talking about. You know, share, like and subscribe. Hit the bell button to be notified when I go live because I go live every week. And when I publish new videos, and I do that every week as well, and hey, till next time, keep rolling those twenties. And I'm not gone. For those of you who are wondering, what is he doing? He's finished. No, I'm not gone. So <clears throat> very quickly, I'm going to put some eyes on. I'm going to go through this chat. I'm going to put some hashtag. I'm going to deal with my questions. And if, if we have time and there's enough people who type into the chat, Fred, can you give us an example? I will build an NPC with you. And depending on what type of NPC you require, I'm going to do maybe more than one. We'll see how we go. So uh, first off, let's just, my eyes seem to be better with the glasses today, but I will take them off to type this in. Um, so we go hashtag question please. Did I get it in? A question please. Okay, we're going to hit the button. I think that's, uh, should have dropped that in there. Yep. I'm not going to pin it because I want you guys to be able to interact with the poll. I see that a lot of people are doing homebrew. So it might be a good exam, a good, um, good thing for me to actually do one of these in a live stream, which I think I've done before. Um, and sort of give you an idea of what the process kind of looks like. All right, so let's go through here very quickly. Uh, Dragon Ball Talk, how's it going? Um, I'm not into uh, talking into camera video. I like narrated um, slideshows, law show, um, law shows. Well, that's fine, but that's not what this is, okay? Um, if you don't like that sort of thing, that's fine. I have what are called edited videos that do have a sort of a slideshow um, presentation. Uh, will there be a slideshow on this topic? Probably, but that might be some time off in the future, okay? Um, if you don't want to see my head and you don't really care for how my face, that's fine, just go watch a different video. Um, but that's how, that's how it runs now with my live streams. Uh, hi Wally, how's it going? Now you have a question. I don't know if you're still here, but let's go through your question. Um, if someone were to put uh, you in their homebrew city as an NPC, what would Fred Wheeler, the NPC, look like? Uh, would they own or work in a shop have an or have an important role? Oh, 
Um, Wally, you really want to know what it would what it would be if I was to take myself and my, my persona and take all the dark th- secrets of myself and place myself into a an adventure or a story of some kind as an NPC. I would probably be an assassin. I know that sounds terrible and horrible. <clears throat> I would probably be the villain. Um, I mean, there's there's a there's part there's a reason why I do actually enjoy being a dungeon master, and that means that I get to be the baddie. You have to have good baddies. I also like playing characters who are the heroes. But my NPC would most likely be um, an assassin. Uh, frankly, <clears throat> that's that's what it would be. <laughs> um, hi, Slick Nasty. The most important question. Yes, well, I've answered that question. <laughs> hi, Brett. Thumbs up um, to one of my other favorite YouTubers, Wally, yes. Yeah, look, Wally's awesome. Um, me and Wally get along like a house on fire. Uh, thank God uh, none of our houses have caught on fire as a result of that. <laughs> uh, now, this name is going to, I'm going to struggle with this name. Uh, is that um, Patricia? Pa- Pavicia? I, I apologize if I've ballsed up your name horribly. I don't know what you've written, um, typed into the chat. I have got no idea. Okay, I do apologise. Um, I, and I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to um, get past your name. It's going to, it's going to be a struggle. Now, remember, if you want me to do an example of how I would build an NPC, I will do it live here today. You just got to make a comment, guys, guys and gals. You got to make a comment, and I will do it. I got, I got my blank piece of paper all ready to go. Um, Wally, what do you got here? Rory Story Cubes. I do have the the app. The official Rory Story Cubes app can be uh, purchased on Google Play. Yep. It also has 12 expansion sets that include three cubes each uh, that you can add into your app. Yeah, I wouldn't bother. Look, there are nine cubes in the the basic um, Rory Story Cubes. That's enough. It's got enough there. You'll be fine with that. Um... Pinterest boards are a great resource for finding images of NPCs. Yes, it can, but it's like I said, it's like a black hole. You can get lost in them very easily. I've done it more than a few times. Um, Pale Rider. What's this? Google College yearbook photos. Ah, maybe that would help. Unlimited pictures, especially the 60s and 70s. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd never even consider that as a possibility, but nice to know. Uh, Raymond, what race would you would you love to see in uh, real life? What race would I love to see in real life? Oh, Raymond, that's actually a really hard question for me because I feel like whatever answer I would give would be an attempt to poke fun at somebody and our cult, our cunt, our current social cultural uh, mindset right now um, yeah I, 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 I would actually have to say crab folk um, they used to be called crab man but I'm going to call them crab folk because uh, you know it's probably the only race that has enough armor to deal with all of the missiles that are going to be flung at them uh, from uh, their workplace their family uh, their friends social media their society, <laughs> they're going to need the protection. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, okay. Look, to be fair, to be fair, I, I've answered the question, but also bear in mind that uh, to get me to answer that question seriously is unlikely. Like many things, um, I will answer some things and be completely honest and not jest, but that one I'm going to jest on. Sorry. Uh, and that's not a poke at you, by the way, Raymond. Um, Lucinio. Lucinio um, Sanchez Soto. Okay, thank you. All right, not a problem. You're welcome. I'm glad I could help. Uh, Ryan. I'd like to see a demo NPC created. Okay, Ryan wants that. 
Slice of Scott, uh, my party wants a shopping session, so I could use an interesting shopkeeper of some sort. Well, some, okay, it sounds like we might have a shopkeeper on our way. Um, Slick Nasty, Fred, will you give us an example? Okay, it looks like we might be getting there. I'm going to get to the bottom here, and we're going to make this happen. So be prepared. Start thinking up names, because that's our first most important thing we need to deal with. Um, you are in the chat here. You can be part of this. Let's get some names going. Um, okay, what do you got here? Uh, Ryan, I, am I hilarious? I don't try to be hilarious. I don't try. Well, that's not true. Um, okay, question from Pale Rider. Please uh, give us an example, please, an NPC of a pie maker that is secretly an assassin. Okay, so we've got a shopkeeper who makes pies. All right, so I, I feel like you guys have already started me on this trail. So uh, I better start writing some down. Um, so I'm going to write down name. I'm going to deal with the name in a second, but since you guys have already started giving me some of the aspects for this character, uh, I'll just write down aspects. Aspects. Uh, there's, there's those times, right, where you suddenly forget to spell. So we're talking about a shopkeeper. We are not dealing with sex or race yet. Uh, and it is a pie maker. And they already have a secret. And they are an assassin. Okay. Right. Good. Good to know. Um, now, I'm work, working my way through here. I don't want to miss anybody if I can help it. Um, hey, Fred, my pie maker assassin laugh out right. Yeah, look, look, we're doing a pie maker assassin today. How about an example of Mr. Rex as a rogue scholar with sticky fingers? <laughs> Maybe we'll get there. Maybe we will. What's this slick nasty? Can we just do a full build of Fred the pie maker assassin? Well, okay, I'll put Fred as a name at the top here. I do feel that um, this might be at my expense, <laughs> but, but, but the name is, is up. Um, so Mara0292, I hope I got your name right. Question, can you make an NPC single father uh, dungeon delver? Well, we'll see about that. We'll see. I don't know if we're going to have time. We're, we're, we're going to start with the pie maker by the looks. Um, we'll come back to that. I will make a quick note somewhere of... An NPC who's what? You've come up with um, an NPC, a single father. I'm not too... Uh, uh, is somebody trying to get me to do their work for a game that's upcoming? A Dungeon Delver. I do feel like Dungeon Delver is just maybe just a bit too on the nose, but okay. Um, and then John. Hi, John Fraser. How's it going? How about an NPC going through life with the curse of the undead on them, uh, where they look like a skeleton? Well, John, how about we add that to our existing pie maker? He's good at the secret. He's an assassin, um, but we can make him a skeleton. I guess I feel like you've already picked their race uh, to a, a large extent. So we're going to put this under race. I don't really want to do race this very second, but... I'll put that like at the very bottom because that's like the most unimportant aspect for me. So I'm going to put this right. It's a skeleton. If you want a particular type of skeleton, you're going to let me know. But we're going to keep going with this since we are, we're, we're going down. Ah, okay. Crab people, crab, crab people, crab people. John. Well, it's either, is it a skeleton or is this a, a, a crab person skeleton? A skeleton of a crab person. Oh, this feels very, very strange. It could be a skeleton or it could be a crab folk. Let's just call it crab folk for now. Okay. So when I say crab folk, there's nothing in Dungeons and Dragons 5e that's even remotely like that. So yes, you could use it in any role play game for those of you who are wondering. Um, we, we're all good. Uh, let's let's keep going here, shall we? Oh, oh my gosh, uh, the chat is firing off big time, uh, and there's a lot of laughter. This, this is going to be fun. Um, there are so many things you can do with uh, an NPC in a storyline. Yes, you can, absolutely. Pale Rider, question, Fred, what NPC that, and that you created are you most fond of? Okay, since we're, we're supposed to be doing this, but I will answer the question, Cyrus the Snowboarding Yeti. Um, I have a picture of him. 
I have written down some details about him, about him. I've used him more than a few times in my games, and I'm not going to say anything more about Cyrus the Yeti because I feel like he Cyrus the Yeti is his own video. You'd literally, I'd need to have a better time for Cyrus the snowboarding Yeti. Okay, so we're moving on. For those of you who are wondering what the heck am I talking about, Cyrus the Snowboarding Yeti does come up in some of the um, uh, Dungeon Master Roundtable discussions. I don't have a Dungeon Master Roundtable discussion today. I'm taking a break, okay? Um, we, are, we are on holiday. Right, so we're working our way through here, trying to keep up with um, the questions. Um, what's this, Zomara? Ah, oh, is that Cholt? Breed man. Okay, so this is a name. You've decided to give uh, a whole a whole name to this character. I'm going to write it down. Cholt breed man. It'd be very funny to be a um, a crab folk and be called that. Uh, Sweeney Todd, um, J T and D and D. I'm ignoring that. <laughs> I'm not putting down um, Sweeney Todd. I will put down Todd though. <laughs> uh, okay um suggestions for race halfling oh gosh why are we going to to race already uh, this is a, remember race is not important i'll put down halfling if you really like but i feel like crab folk or skeletons far more interesting <laughs> I, I i would be more interested in that as a player but hey whatever he travels around in a wagon with an oven on a cart oh my ryan ryan berg Okay, so I guess we're going to have to put that down. So I guess that comes under his, his, his aspects as function. So here's a wagon uh, with oven. And he travels. I think that's uh, a traveling sales pieman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, we're really going for it today, aren't we? That's the way, that's the way. Slick Nasty, they could easily make poison pies um, similar to uh, dream pastries to kill. Are we, do we really want to poison the pies? Do we really want to poison the pies? I feel like the poisoning the pies is just like, I mean, we're turning it into a villain. You guys want this to be uh, fine, poison pies. Okay, cells. Part of a secret sells poison pies. It has been done. Um, now, what sort of poison? Does it actually kill them? Ooh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe it does something else. Um, okay, so what do you got here, John? How about a rogue spy with a printing shop smuggling out information to enemies through the prints they print out? Okay, so I'll put this down as a, um, I, I might, we might get to that, but I doubt it. I doubt it. I think the pie maker is, um, is winning, um, for, frankly, right now. <clears throat> Fred Castle. Oh, my gosh. I, I, mean, we know, I know where that's going. Frank Castle, Fred Castle. Yeah, I, 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 saw, the, I saw the Punisher look um, coming up there. Not that I don't like the Punisher. Um, I will write down as a surname, Castle, for those of you who must. Castle it is. Um, see how easy this is. Raymond, do you try to avoid classes players use for NPCs? No, but I don't actually go out of my way to pick classes NPCs um, and the players use. I, I, I don't even think in terms of class. What you're talking about is when you start thinking about class, you start thinking about combat. And I try to avoid doing that if I can. Um, Pale Rider. I'm not sure if I buy a pie from a skeleton. Exactly. But maybe from a crab folk. Crab person? <laughs> um, what's there? Roger. Hi, Roger. Guess what, Roger? I know I have a friend who's from Fiji called Roger. So I'm putting down Roger as a potential name for this NPC. Um, and I'm also, <clears throat> I'm also putting down Sei, which is S-A-I. Now, this is a person I know from Tuvalu. I'm putting down Rohan. Rohan is from India. Um, I'm I know it doesn't sound Indian. Okay, it's all right. Calm down. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put... Now, I'm picking names of people that I know and I'm aware of. For those of you who are wondering what the heck is going on here. I'm going to write down Miley. 
Uh, that's M A E L E. This is a person I know. Uh, I don't remember where she's from. She's one of the, from one of the Pacific Islands. I can't remember where exactly. Um, I'm putting down Leela. Leela is somebody that I, I've known in the past um, from Macau. Um, so you can see, you can use a lot of different names. I know this is not just male and female. I mean, I'm going male and female. I'm, uh, we're mixing it up here a bit. Just go with names that you think might work. Um, what else is another name? That, not Sebastian. I know, I know a person who was called Sebastian. Sebastian. A very long time ago, one of my best friends. And uh, who else? Who, who else has got a name that really sort of stood out for me? I'm going to put down my brother's name, Sam. And then we'll put in Dave, because I've got a brother called David. Um, and oh, I'm going to put down uh, Gabriel, because I have a sister called Gabriel. So I picked these from people that I know, are friends with, and are part of my family. And I could pick any one of these. And I think the name that we should go with is... Frankly, I do like Cholt Breedman. Um, I'm still not sold on it, but we're going to come back to the name because we can. We don't have to nail it down just yet. Um, where, where are we? Did I lose my train of thought here? Raymond, um, do you try to avoid it? No, no, I've already talked about that. Uh, no, I wouldn't buy it. Yeah, that was done there. That bit. Ah. Oh. Krusty Graham Cracker. His name should be Graham, known as as Krusty Graham Cracker. Nice. Funny, Roger. Funny. <laughs> yes, I figured that was a joke. South Park. I don't watch South Park. I wouldn't know the joke. But I did figure out that it was a joke. So, seafood in the pie? Well, possible. Probably, I don't know. Oh, 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 oh. That, that, that's a bit on the nose, don't you think? I think not. I think it's going to have to be cow. Okay. It's going to, have to be cow or chicken. Um, something like that. <laughs> Let's not get too carried away, shall we? A plus one graham cracker um, um, crusts for uh, ice cream pies. No oven necessary. I, I don't know. I kind of like the oven on the back of the, um, the wagon or cart. Law for evil. Look, I'm not even going anywhere near alignment. Okay? Not that I don't believe that alignment isn't important, but it's not usually what I work with when I'm building an NPC. Okay? We'll deal with that later on. Okay, so um, J, JT, what have you got here? The pies made out uh, made out of people. Poison pies made out of people. Okay, of course, of course they're going to be made out of people. Um, people pies. People pies that are poisonous. Very sick. Very, very sick. Um, <laughs> the skeleton wears the skin of his latest, um, latest victim. Oh, it's getting very, very macabre now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I feel like the skeleton's a bit a bit much, and wearing somebody's skin is is creepy as. Still, you could do it, but I'm not going to. Uh, not today. Uh, John, what do you got here? Uh, buried um, axe blade or a hard-boiled egg, like you see in the TV show, Washington Spies. Really? Any Yes. Like, what would be distinguishing features? Look, they look like a crab. I think that's more distinguishing than it gets. So when it comes to appearance, so let's write down appearance. Appearance. We don't have to worry too much because if we use the crab folk, looks like a crab standing on two legs. Like crab on two legs. Do we really need to have anything more than that? Would, do you need to give him glasses fedora you really want to give him a glasses and fedora I feel like that's enough but I'll write it down since you feel you need to I feel like you are looking at the um, at the live stream and at my hat and my glasses right now and going with that I'm sure that's where the idea popped in right fedora <laughs> this is not obviously as quick as it would normally be because I am responding to chat for those of you who are wondering <laughs> um, who can't read maps um, it depends. If they're upside down, I struggle. <laughs> Buried X blade. Um, pot pies causes Tasha's hideous laughter. Um, slap happy people. <laughs> uh, to cure hysteria. Okay, okay. 
All right, so pies. We haven't. We, we're actually going off in, in a vein. So laughing, laughing pies that are poisonous that are made from people. Good lord. Okay, so <laughs> let us let us actually use some of the things that I was talking about. So first off, we've got plenty of names, and I'm going to nail it down to. Um, is it Chult? C H U L T. Chult Castle. I'm going to pick those two names. Um, we already got the uh, the function, but now we need all the rest. So I've got the player's handbook for Dungeons and Dragons 5e here. So if I open this thing up, I wonder if it'll be at the right page. Probably not. And we look for a background that sort of revolves around what we want. Clearly, what would be the one thing I would pick? I don't know. Is uh, is there the right one here? I think we're going to go with the charlatan. I feel like even though they're an assassin, a charlatan makes a lot of sense. So I'm going to grab some dice. So if you've got the player's handbook, I'm on page 128. You feel free to roll some dice along with me because I'm going to do this. And we're going to use the charlatan for building out this NPC for those of you who are wondering how this is going to go. Um, a, a, a traveling undead pie maker who uh, assassinates people is also a crab person. Okay, so we'll go with undead, but not skeleton. Undead, undead. There we go. Crab folk, undead. Talk about going out of the uh, circle, square, oval. <laughs> we've really we've gone over. We've gone over some very peculiar things. Yes, you can. Absolutely, Jay. Use celebrity names. Celebrity names, um, no, why should they be an issue? If somebody gets offended because you use a celebrity name, why is, why is there a, an issue around that? Um, I, just don't, I just don't see why you shouldn't concern yourself with. People, you've got to stop worrying about the words that you use. It's the meanings behind it that people use that are important, not the actual words or the names. Okay? Snake e what snake eggs for the uh, potion of the pie? Oh my gosh, you really are going nutty, aren't you? Okay, Eddie Murphy, the pie maker. Well, he could, but I'm not going to do that. So grab some dice. The first chart we need to roll on for our charlatan is a six-sided dice. So there's a scam. Um, now, we, we may not find that these scams, if we roll randomly, are going to work, so we're going to adjust this if I don't like it. Because we've already got quite a lot of stuff built around this pie maker okay who is called Cholt Castle or I feel like I really want to call it Ro, um, Rohan Rohan Castle rather than Cholt Castle um, right now I really like Rohan so I'm, I'm going to turn him into a crab folk we're going to go with that Rohan uh, that's actually a good idea the pie maker is an assassin he could ask the um, PCs to get a very important ingredient for the place his uh, from the place his target is. Yeah, could, absolutely. Yes, we need to start doing the other stuff. So let's make this ha hang, um, long pipe porks. <laughs> start rolling some dice, people. Six-sided dice, get them out. Start rolling some dice. Um, if I get uh, the first number to come up on my live chat, is the, the number I'm going to read out over the, whatever I roll on my own dice, okay? Otherwise, that's, that's how I work here. You give me the information, I will do it. His hit list is his cookbook book. I'm going to write that down. Um, and I'm actually going to make that as Bond. Possibly. Maybe. Possibly. Oh, I like the idea. I'm going to write it down anyway. Um, cookbook is hit list. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, this is, this is very, very strange. Um, we haven't done anything like this in a long time. Chalt Castle is a crab folk, regenerates slowly, and he is one-armed because he he cuts off one claw to make his pies to disguise his lung. Oh my gosh. I got a three. Slick nasty. Roll the dice. Finally, somebody rolled something. All right, so what have we got here? This is what we've got. Does this work for me or for you guys? Um, oh. I insinuate myself into people's lives to prey on their weakness and secure their fortunes. Okay. So I'm going to write down this, the scam. 
this is part of a scam, which is a little bit more than what you normally get with the aspects, but I'm going to put down the scam, is to, um, yeah, I'm actually fine with that. Prey on people. Prey on people or whoever for their fortunes. Yep, good. I like it. All right, so I've got a seven. Let's move. Now, we're rolling an eight-sided dice now. Somebody rolled a seven, so um, JT, you rolled the seven. I'm going to take that seven, and we're going to use that for the personality traits. So we need some personality traits. I'm going to pick one. I know some of you will be like, why only one? Well, because you don't actually have to have that many. And the more personality traits you have, the more complicated you make your character, and you can wind up in a sea of complexity. So we don't need to do that. Let's have a look to see what personality traits on page 128 says for our charlatan. Seven says, I keep uh, multiple holy symbols on me and invoke whatever deity might come in useful at any given moment. I actually like that idea. Um, I could, uh, look, uh, normally I would just pick something that I feel out of all of them that I like the most. But that one actually is fine with me. I actually kind of like that one. So multiple multiple holy symbols symbols um, pretend basically pretend to worship different gods this is very much like the character from the mummy you know that um, the main character had a friend who was a bit sly and um, he just had you know all these different holy symbols he would pull out um, which are different deities okay I like that that's a personality trait we're going to give him that um, and we don't actually need to give him that much more than that I mean we could but we not, don't need to right so the next chart here is ideals now I believe that Zamora has rolled a one uh, and we're going to go with uh, one on ideal. Independence. I am a free spirit. I believe that that makes an awful lot of sense. So we're going to go with ideal. With this character, that actually kind of fits. So we're going to go with a free spirit. Doing their own thing. They're independent. Which I do feel like this is not an assassin you would hire. I believe that they're really working for themselves. Now somebody's typed something in here that is currently being blocked by YouTube. What did you do? Um, what? No atheists in a crab hole. Why did it block that? I don't see why that would be an issue. But that blocked it. It's not blocked anymore. Yep, yeah, holy symbols hanging around in the wagon. I like that idea. Uh, only being able to walk diagonally and sideways. Uh, sly, nasty. That's very, very funny. Okay, so I, I need some more dice rolling. We're now on to a six-sided dice. I need a bond. We haven't got a bond yet. Um, and it is time to get that bond rolling. So where's my bond, people? You're too slow with those six-sided dice. Start rolling, start rolling, and putting it down in the chat. Somebody rolled a four. Ah, John Fraser. He's got it. He's got the bond. So number four is, I come from a noble family, and one day I'll reclaim my lands and title from those who stole them from me. I don't like that one. Um, I need another dice roll, people. Sorry, John, I'm not going to pick the four. I just don't like that one. I feel like that's, um, I don't feel like that works for Rohan uh, Castle, the crab folk, undead, pie-making, selling assassin. Uh, it doesn't work for me in the slightest. <laughs> so I've either got to roll a dice myself or somebody else has got to roll a six-sided dice and give me another number because I'm not using four. Otherwise, I'm going to have to read through all of these. I don't really necessarily want to do that. My dice is ready to go. Okay. So <clears throat> nobody's rolled, um, given me a number yet. So I'm a rolled a two. And so what have I got on the two since I rolled a two for bond? 
Um, I owe everything to my mentor, uh, a horrible person who probably, who's probably rotting in a jail somewhere. I believe you did. I believe it. Up oh, two, two. Oh my gosh, Pale Rider got two. So did Zamora got got two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, six. I'm I'm not sure how I feel about um, a, a mentor who's in jail. It's it's hard for me to get latch onto this. Somebody's rolled a six. So John, you've rolled a six. Let's have a look. Um, I swindled and ruined a person who didn't deserve it, and I seek to atone for uh, my misdeeds. I don't like that either. I kind of feel like this bond, this might be one of those times where I can't use the player's handbook backgrounds to get the one I want. Because I'm kind of looking through here, and frankly, none of this, I don't, I don't really like any of these. So I'm going to roll a story cube. This is the Rory story cubes, for those of you who are wondering, when is, when is I going to ever use a story cube? Well, I'm going to use a story cube now. Okay. You guys have already done so much of the work without having to do anything else. It's destiny. You reckon? Three times over. I don't know. I don't feel like it's it's going to work for me. I'm going to roll the story, story cube and see if the story cube comes up with a better idea. I'm going to roll three of these things and see what I get. And then you will, you'll, you'll let me know if this is not going to work for you. So three story cubes to give me an idea of its of their um, their bond. Otherwise, I guess we fall back on number two. Okay, so I rolled a book. Interesting. I rolled a footprint and a walking stick. Do you know the book? Actually, you know when somebody said that the cookbook is is a hit list. I was actually thinking that maybe that is the bond. Maybe that is the bond. That uh, that cookbook or hit list is a list of people, kind of like Kill Bill, a list of people that are that uh, Rohan Castle, the crab folk pie maker, has. Um, that's the revenge list. That's their bond. They 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 cannot. They they are so drawn and fixated on that particular thing. So I'm going to make it that. For those of you who don't like it, you can pick two, number two, if you really want, off, uh, off the bonds. But I'm going to go with that because I actually think I like that more. So bonded to the cookbook, book, revenge, hit list. That's, that's really what they're fixated on. That's all they're working towards. They can't afford to lose that list. It's quite long. That cookbook is full. There's a lot of people who have done done wrong to Rohan. Um, okay, so that is how <laughs> that is how I've done that. But we need a floor though. So I need some six-sided dice rolled for some floor. A floor. I feel like this character is so flawed as it is that it probably doesn't need a floor, but we're gonna do it anyway. Um, right. So this is where we get a floor. So what do we want with a floor? I'm gonna, have I got a dice roll on somebody? Nobody's got a dice roll for me. Apparently there's no dice roll happening today. No six sided dice, come on, give me some more dice. Um, Zamora, I, 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 uh, I, uh, I don't know what to say. I just don't know what to say. I like the cookbook idea quite a bit as the, as the bond, you know, the, the, that revenge list is just what they're fixated on. I actually think that's quite smart. Pale Rider rolled a one for floor. Oh dear, I can't resist a pretty face. Yeah, I can live with that, Pale Rider. I think we'll take it. Can't resist a, pale, a pretty face. Can't resist a pretty face. It's a very shallow crab folk, this one. Okay. So, we've got all of the basic things we needed. Now, when you look at something like the charlatan and the background, you'll notice that it has criminal special, 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 uh, speciality, specialty, specialty, criminal specialty. Take that feature and incorporate that into your NPC if you want. I honestly think 
that that is actually very useful to you, okay? You can pick a specialty. So somebody's just rolled a uh, roll an eight-sided dice. We're going to pick a specialty. There's a, there's a, a chart for that. Um, even the deception and uh, stealth could be very useful in terms of that's the skills that they're proficient with. Um, a game set or a thieves tools. Well, we can we can pick a game set or thieves tools. It's up to you. I don't think it's terribly important to worry too much about that. I need an eight-sided dice roll, and we're getting our specialty sorted out. Oh, this is criminal. Oh, wrong. Forget about that. That's criminal. Forget about that. We're going too far. We've done the charlatan, um, and I, th I think that is good enough. Now, for those of you who are wondering, thank you, John, for the four. I wonder what it would be. A fence. Yeah, that would be a criminal. That would be a different character. So first off, we've done pretty much all the work we needed to do. Didn't get a picture. I'm not going to worry about... It's all right, John. It's all cool. Um, we're... We're not going to fixate. Rohan could be Rohanina if we wanted to be female. This is why I don't focus on the sex of or the race of an NPC if I can help it. Um, I try to focus on everything else. They're probably the most important aspects is your name, okay, and then your motivation. And we've got our motivation. Our motivation is very much tied to our... Um, our function and our purpose, our occupation, okay? So the motivation came out of this very easily by doing everything else. And our motivation is to kill the people on the hit list. Kill people on hit list. See how easy that was to actually... There's a natural process... Uh, and, and certainly I could have done this a lot faster if I didn't do this live, but this is why I say name is most important. Motivation is really important, but we don't necessarily do it first. Do the aspects, and we've covered, we've covered everything that we really needed, okay, and a lot more. And we didn't really need to use very much of anything. A lot of people came up with a lot of these ideas without having to use tools. The appearance, that was easy enough to pull off. So that was quite easy. In terms of a stat block, look, if you were playing Dungeons and Dragons 5e and we wanted a stat block, what would that stat block be? If you have a look in the back of the, the monster manual, you probably already have guessed what would be probably the most sensible stat block if you were in a, in a battle or combat to use. Because we've got an assassin there. Okay, page 343. We have a stat block for an assassin. Forget about everything else that's here. That's unimportant. There's our stat block. If we don't like that, we can use something else. There's no reason why a commoner can't be an assassin. So um, Rohan Castle, the crab folk, undead, pie-making assassin, could easily be just use a stat block of a commoner rather than anything particularly special. So that's that's how it is um, in terms of making an NPC. Surprisingly, if you're playing Dungeons & Dragons 5e, you probably have all the tools already that you need. You don't need anything else. Do I do this with characters which already have some details but not all of them? Yes, I do. I used a lot of these techniques when I was doing the NPCs for the Lost Mon of Fandelva. And I will do that probably with Dragon of Ice by a Peak. And I may well do that with something like the Curse of Strahd. But the Curse of Strahd, I really feel most of those NPCs are so well built and so fleshed out, it is unnecessary to do so. So, um, to give you an idea, that's how I would go about doing it. So I'm going to just check through my chat here. I'm going to have another drink of water. I will also say that um, next week will not. I, I'm on holiday in a week's time, which means normal live streaming will stop. So my normal program will stop for about 16 days as I take time off, and I will be resorting to uh, painting. That means you'll probably see me in painting streams. The yes, overboard DM. Hi Joe. I did say that um, every four months when I take leave I will paint. 
So you can talk to me about anything under the sun there, okay? But I won't have a specific topic. Um, so let's just make sure I caught up on everything. Okay, so what have we got here? Bird X dying, uh, drying the meat from his prey to make the ultimate pie to poison the demigod he's deemed to be the source of his troubles. Oh, a demigod's on his hit list. Whoa, we're getting, we're getting crazy there. Well, I don't, uh, yeah, okay, all right. I'm not Pale Rider. You, you said it, not me. <laughs> lasagna oh you guys are getting sick here no 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 no, no. that's it's got to be his weakness not something that he's going to be so the, his the, the look the, this the, the downfall of this character is going to be somebody who's pretty yeah it's got to be something that's going to work right what's he got here slick nasty he could hire the player to deliver a pie to one of the players in the cookbook hit list yes we, i think we covered that Game set chess, yes, absolutely. Game set chess, why not? That actually kind of makes sense. We'll put down chess set. Strategic, yeah. Without telling the details. All right, okay. I mean, yeah. It's it's very easy, uh, and look, most. Roleplay games have stat blocks for generic NPCs. Uh, Sick Nasty, what's this? This was really fun, by the way, Fred. Okay, good. Uh, anything else in the future we could um, build? Like, this would be um, awesome. I used the Lost Mine of Fendelva to intro new players into my Sword Coast, making the NPCs using this uh, will be awesome. Uh, so, Ryan Berg, you can make NPCs for the Lost Mine of Fendelva if you want, but I've, I've made videos on almost all of them already. <laughs> the work is done okay the work is done so and yes we could do something else but what would we do for me I spend most of my time on maps NPCs and monsters and uh, frankly most of my time on monsters and NPCs so yeah we could make a monster or we could modify them I like changing monsters a lot um would it this would that sort of thing really be what people want though? That's that's the issue. I always find like, is there enough drive by people to have that sort of thing? Because I'm never too sure. Um, play one handed. Oh god, game set chess. Right. So uh, I don't know what the dex means, but anyway. Azamora. Me, I'll make some campaign world for the, all right. Yeah, your eclipse um, phase. So yeah, so your NPCs are going to be, hopefully be a lot easier to make fast. Please, if you get stuck, it's all right to leave an NPC with a space where there's nothing filled in and come back to it later. You'll be surprised that things just pop into your mind later on. Your, the brain is a funny thing. Even though you have consciously stopped thinking about something, your brain has not stopped doing that. It is capable of doing other things in the background that you're unaware of. Okay? Um, yes. So uh, I've got a, a slard, a beholder. I feel like I'm going to need a bit more. 16 days is a lot of days. Um, what's that? Is that Bain Pora? Bain Pora? I, I, I'm sorry, I can't. I will have to go back into the live stream later on, uh, on and find out what you're trying to say. Uh, Grazit. I don't know what the Grazit is all about, though. Okay, Jim. His downfall should be probably his um, need to, his need, unable to hide his desire for fresh meat for his pies. Yeah, I don't think that he's eating his own pies. I think he's giving his pies to somebody else. How much should the pies cost? Seriously, we're going to go there, are we? Two copper. Two copper. Make them cheap. Don't make them too expensive. We're not going to make them. We're not going to make them expensive. Two copper. You can maybe you can sell them a bit more expensive to somebody who's got lots of money. Yeah, make them cheap. I believe in uh, you know. I believe that we should use coppers more. <laughs> you guys have haven't figured it out. I, I'm taking uh, this another poke. Um, anyway, 
Yeah, one so what's this negative space? Hello, negative space. How's it going? Fun random tables. Yes, there are a lot of fun random tables. Negative space. I think determining an NPC's ideals, goals, flaws. Yeah. So goals, motivations, objectives are pretty much the same sort of thing. Flaws, bonds, and writing them down. A couple of things that that might say, or you know, quick words. Yes, quirky words. Yes. I'm glad that helped you. I, I feel like this, my intention was to give you actual tools. And my advice to you is use the stuff that's low tech that doesn't actually require you to buy anything. You can do all of this without having to buy any additional books. Okay, you really don't need any of it. Even the story cubes, you don't need those. There are other ways of dealing with that. Okay. Okay. Only the nobles can afford them? Well, it's only provided the nobles are on the hit list. Um, would he still sell normal pies that aren't poisonous? That's a good question. I kind of feel like it wouldn't always be making pies that are poisonous. Maybe all the pies are made from human flesh, but that's a different thing since we've already talked about that one. Hello, negative space. Um Pale Rider, hobgoblin paladin that is sworn to protect his people from the encroaching human settlements. Slick Nasty, I would enjoy monster building, map building, quests or anything like that personally. So for me, to give you an idea of where my head's at, and look, since I don't have, I don't have to worry about losing my voice today because I don't have a Dungeon Master Roundtable, um... I've been really reluctant to show you guys what I do with monsters, and the reason is that people might view this as uh, view what I do with monsters as bad advice, because what I do with monsters is what I do for my home group, and my home group are very experienced. They've been playing a very long time. They've all been playing Dungeons and Dragons 5e pretty much from the very beginning, and as a result of that. It is entirely possible. I would also like to point out that a, a crab folk doesn't necessarily have to have any kind of sex. It doesn't even have to be male or female. Could it be, could be either one. Is it androgynous? Asexual? We don't have to go either way. Um, but yeah, if I do monsters and I, I do anything with monsters, I feel like people would think that this is, a, this is how you do it. Whereas it's not actually that. It's how I do it. And I'm pretty ruthless with my, my home group. And I don't really like a lot of the stat blocks in the monster manual, so I tend to have to change a lot of stuff. So I'm always really concerned about doing that. I have built monsters from scratch from the Dungeon Master Guide. You're welcome. Thank you for showing up, um, Buried um, X-Blade. Um, so yeah... I am really unsure about whether I should do that because I think, you know, when I've done jest videos on this channel and I've just tried to take the piss out of another YouTuber or the fact that people make on YouTube certain types of videos like the worst mistakes a Dungeon Master makes or the worst things or mistakes that, the worst mistakes or taboos that players make, which these videos I hate with a, with a passion. Um, when I make those videos and I take the piss, people think I made a, a serious video, like I was actually quite serious, whereas I was just trying to have a bit of fun um, and, t and poke fun at it. So I am a little concerned that people might gravitate to those that sort of thing and think that I am actually making, this is how you should do it. And I'm not a should dungeon master, I'm a could dungeon master. You could do it this way, but frankly, I don't care what you do at your table. It's up to you. Um... Yeah, maps. I've done maps before in the past. That's, I suppose, possible. I always find that doing a map as a live stream is a hard process because it puts a lot of pressure on you to actually produce something and for it to sort of come out all right. Um, it would be a piece of cake for me to do monsters because adjusting monsters with D&D &D Beyond, I can do that and put my face in the corner. It's easy peasies. Wouldn't be hard at all. Um, but yeah, I will ask a lot of, um, I'm going to ask a lot of questions, there's going to be a lot of surveys, uh, you're probably going to see many, many surveys and I'm going to be asking heaps of questions about all this sort of stuff. 
Now, I will also be asking what's in a good time to live stream painting miniatures. That's going to come up, by the way, overboard DM or Joe. Okay. Right. So um, I just need to make sure I catch up with the live stream a little bit here. Uh, have your players write down names ahead of time before the game. The names drop some during during a game. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean that's 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 all good good advice. Um, I mean, you can. I, I I I don't. I mean, I pull from my players when I need to pull from. Sometimes before the game. Sometimes during the game. Who knows? Yes, it is definitely time for a lot of people to go and do some drinking. <laughs> What's that? Um, JT and D and D. Thanks for the fun, Fred. You're welcome. I hope my channel becomes like yours. Live stream. I know it's scary. I am starting to. Un I, I unlisted a lot of my live streams. They are now going public again, slowly but surely. I've only got 360 of the damn things to get through, but it will eventually get there. But I will tidy them up so that they're a bit easier to consume. I put nice thumbnails on them, and I'll do all the things I'm supposed to do that YouTube likes, and uh, they will get. They'll go back up. Don't hide your live streams. I know. I know the analytics tears you down with them, but make sure that you um, people understand it's a type of content on your channel, but not the only content. Okay, and put them into um, playlists. Live streams should go into playlists. Easy to find. Fred Wheeler, you reckon? Joe, are you still painting miniatures? I, that's my question to you. I'm kind of curious now. Uh, we kind of got off topic now, but uh, that's all right. We'll uh, we'll deal with that. Um, well, the rules are there to build your world off, uh, to fit your gameplay. Exactly, exactly. Whenever I need an NPC, I, I tell the uh, party to see a, a man wearing a magic flat top hat across the room. <laughs> he teaches people how to enjoy life and players and characters, and you shouldn't kill your, your players. No. Um, this one good piece of advice, which is always good advice, is as a dungeon master, never kill your players. It's all right to kill their characters, but never the players, because killing your players is still illegal, okay? I don't think there's a country in the world where it's legal to kill your players. But killing their characters, eh, that's all right. That's not a big deal, you know? It happens. I mean, if you're going out of your way to just do it just for the sake of doing, eh, I don't know, maybe a bit of it if there. But, you know, characters dying is not a problem. It's when, when the, the players die that you've gone too far. Those rules are not set in stone. Absolutely. Exactly. No rules are set in stone. Well, maybe the one about killing your players. That may be set in stone. <laughs> uh, dear. Okay, look, I think what we have done here is reasonably useful to people. I'm going to end the poll. It is clear to me that many people are doing homebrew adventures, which is fantastic. And we've got your feedback from the from the um, the poll. My advice is go and use some of the stuff that I have suggested to you. Okay, go and try it out and see what it's like. Because I know a blank piece of paper is often very hard to deal with. Okay, and I'm glad that people had a good time. Because if you didn't have a good time, something went wrong along the long way. <laughs> you got to have a good time somewhere, right? And you might as well have it here. So thank you to everybody who showed up. And it doesn't matter wherever you are or whoever you are, okay? Whether you're a patron, just somebody watching my videos, okay? Thank you for coming and watching my very long live stream today. I wish you all the best for the new year. Have a wonderful um, new year. And I'm sure that something new will come, whether it's good or bad, who knows, but it'll something else. And... I'll be here to help you find a way to escape all of the crazy stuff that might be happening around you um, and help you along your way playing your games. That is my intention. So wherever you are in the world, whether it is the morning, the afternoon, the night, or the wee wee early morning, please look after yourself, your family and your friends. Be nice to your neighbours. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.
Yes, think outside the box. Absolutely, John. Outside the box, outside the circle, there are no boundaries. (laughs) 